What's up, everybody? Welcome to some Black White. Overwhelming Splendor. Hope you're excited. Hope you're ready to get your curses on. Uh, I am, man. Ready to have some fun. Uh, so as our opening hand goes, we have Windswept Teeth, we have Concealed Courtyard, Nodes, Frexian Unlife. Yeah, this is not too bad. Frexian Unlife will buy us a little bit more time. We will keep on this one. Welcome to Jank City. This is uh, not Tier 1 at all. But hey, it's a lot of fun to play. I enjoy it. It's kind of a uh, perform any opening hand actions. There we go. Ley line of sanctity. There we go. Get that on the battlefield. Um, let's go ahead and get the windswept heat down. I think that sounds good. Anything else? Now we're going to go and pass the turn. Kick it over our opponent. But yes, welcome to some black, white, overwhelming splendor or curses. Um, this deck is. Uh it's pretty fun. All right, so our main win condition is Frexian Unlife. So we're looking to get down Frexian Unlife, but we're also looking to get down Solemnity. Um, and I may say that different three or four times without the video. I don't know why. It's just Jolt versus the English language on that one. Can't really get it. All right, Noble High Arc. Um, get that down. That's fine. Maybe? Not. It might be, in fact. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't played against Infect in a long time, so if it is, it's kind of like running into your old buddy at the grocery store. Like, hey, Infect, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, y'all still see that you're uh, still being mean. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and get down the Concealed Courtyard. Oh, beautiful. You just need one more land. Uh, let's go, yeah, let's go ahead and get that down. Uh, let's go for the nodes. It's either Infect or it's going to be some sort of Bant. Uh, our opponent did go for Windswept Heat, so um, getting that down. So it might be some sort of Bant, um, uh, Nightfall, I don't know. But uh, we'll at least go and get the nodes down, though, but we can target Noble High Arc, High Arc, and then we can also get down the uh, Frexian Unlife and go for Solemnity, get that down, and then stabilize from there. So if you're not really sure how that, that interaction works, so Frexian Unlife says you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. As long as you have zero or less life, all damage is dealt to you as though it had Infect. And when you're dealt infect damage, you're dealt in the form of counter. So, we get solemn solemnity on the battlefield. I'm telling you, it's going to be a struggle. You're going to keep track. Go for it. All right, Punnett's going to go for path on that one. In response, that's okay. Go for it. And then we're going to lose nodes. Um, so, once, this one's on the battlefield. Players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifact creatures, enchantments, or lands. So, it's going to allow us to, basically, they're going to have to have an answer for one of these two to get them off the battlefield before we're going to lose. Which will buy us enough time to start going for the, oh, beautiful, drawn to Urborg. Uh, which will give us enough time to get our enchantments down. Um, our opponent does have one breeding pull up, four cards in hand. Let's go Frexian on life, see if this sticks. We might be running into a counter spell, but um, we'll go ahead and get it. Alright, beautiful. Alright, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. Kick it over our opponent. So, we get Frexian Unlife down, then we get down the Solemnity down, and then we can also get down Sigil and the Empty Throne. So, if we do have Sigil in the hand, Sigil isn't one of in the deck. Excuse me. Uh, Sigil is a one of in the deck. And what we're doing, oh, Bant Eldrazi, duh. <laughs> I haven't seen Eldrazi in a long time. All right, Realic Smash come in. Uh, we'll be able to get down Solemnity and then hopefully kind of stabilize from the, uh, the horde of the Eldrazi coming across. All right. Ghostly Prison. Yeah, let's go and get down Solemnity. I, I like that. Opponent's tapped out. And then we'll just be able to kind of just slowly draw into lands. It'll be a nice little stalemate. So, uh, we have the lock on the table, so they're going to have to get rid of one of those or destroy it. And I think at this point, I, I can't really remember what uh, Eldrazi Tron could actually get going. I mean, Bant Tron. Not Bant Tron. <laughs> and I'm all over the place. Bant Eldrazi could do to kind of stop this as far as in their main in their hands. So, we may have to watch out for something like Echoing Truth coming out of the sideboard. But at least we're going to kind of be able to kind of stabilize from here. Fingers crossed. Eldrazi spies Sky Spawner. Okay. Let's see what we draw into. Draw into another Frexian Unlife. Um, but yeah, we're just going to get the Ghostly Prison down. Kind of tighten it up just a little bit. Uh, we're on... We just need to hit a land at this point right now. So we do have the Tutor in the hand. Search your library for an enchantment card. I'd like to see if we can't get to about 5 mana. Because once we uh, grab uh, the... I think it's the Curse of Misfortunes. It's a five-man enchantment. Uh, what we can do off that is we can start slowly searching up our curses, which is going to allow us to kind of um, slowly win the game out. So we can go for that once we, get, once we get to five mana. But we did get lucky in getting this down on the battlefield. So we're down to one right now. Drawn to a Plains. Let's go and get that down. And in fact, let's go and tutor that one up. That way, if we do it the land next turn, uh, we can go for it. So go for the tutor. Let's go for the Curse of Misfortunes. Excuse me, Curse of Death Soul would be nice, but we can grab it off that one. Curse of Misfortunes, yep. Search your library for a curse card. Okay, we're going to go for that one. Goes into the hand, anything else. Now we're going to go and pass the turn. So, keeping our fingers crossed that we get the land drop for the turn. If we don't, then we can still just kind of stabilize right now. We have a nice little board state between Ghostly Prison and then the uh, kind of the soft lock on the board right now. And we're sitting at one. Uh, the only thing is if we do draw into like a Windswept Heat, well actually, excuse me, we do have Herb work on the battlefield. So if we do draw into a Fetch Land or something like that, uh, we'll be able to kind of stabilize from there. All right. See if Reality Smash wants to swing in. Nothing's going to happen. All right. And then, all right, Concealed Courtyard. We'll go ahead and get that down. And I guess we'll go ahead and we're going to get down Frixian on life, just in case something else happens to it. 
All right, get down the Phyrexian Unlife, pass the turn. So we're going to get down C Curse of Misfortunes. And what we're going to be able to do off Curse of Misfortunes is um, we do have um, Death's Hold in here, which is going to be minus one, minus one, which is going to wipe out our opponent's creatures. We also have Cruel, um, not Cruel Ultimatum. It is, what is it? It is a... Uh, Cruel Reality, I think. It's the one from Amonkhet, where they're kind of kind of gruesome-looking scene. Um, but yeah, so we have that one in here where they're going to lose five lives unless they can sacrifice a creature. And then we also have um, Overwhelming Splendor to kind of wipe their creatures out. But we need to get some stuff going. So let's go and go Curse of Misfortunes. I'm going to choose our opponent. Tap for one more. There we go. All right, get down Curse of Misfortunes. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. But yeah, so we're going to start off, and another thing that we can also grab off the curses would be um, the Curse of Scarabs, or Torment of Scarabs, and so that's going to make our opponent lose three life. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's going to make our opponent lose three life, unless they sacrifice a creature. So at this point, it's going to be very slow in our opponent. I'm glad, yes, we're going to use that ability. Um, let's go ahead, and what we can do is we can go for Curse of Death's Hold. We go for Overwhelming Splendor, makes them a 1-1. One, one. They can't activate... Get that, and then we can Curse of Death's Hold, and then we go for that one. If we go for it, yeah, we need to go for that to get their creatures off the battlefield. So we'll get Overwhelming Splendor down. And then, oh, that's, ooh. <laughs> I just accidentally hit F6. Okay. Okay, there we go. Whew. I thought we were going to cycle through our turn. Let's go and get the, down the Sigil of the Empty Throne. There we go. And then next turn, we can tutor up a curse. We can also go for Phyrexian Unlife and start getting those angels on the battlefield. All right. So, and then basically with Overwhelming Splendor, Chant Player, their um, creatures lose all abilities and have base toughness of 1-1. One, one, and then we would have been able to go for the other one to kind of close them out. But our opponent kind of got down the Eldrazi lockdown. Let's see if we can't get this over to game two. Um, I think on this one, I'm just laughing that... Um, on this stack, you steal some wins, but we may not be able to close it out. So just hey, let's ha just realize that we had some fun game one. All right, so <laughs> let's go ahead and move Rune Halo over there. Do we want to bring in Stony Silence? I don't know if we need that one. Um, I think yeah, we probably need to go ahead and bring in three pass. I like um, should be good to bring in three pass. Surgical Extraction. I think we're okay on that one. So at this point right now, what do we? Um, I can't remember Bant Eldrazi's sideboard as far as enchantments go. Let's go ahead and let's go and just go and bring in two greater Ormancy. Let's go off one Rune Halo. Um, let's kind of back off the the nodes on this one. I like leaving in the path to exile. It's gonna be three of those. It's gonna be, let's go down on one Knight's Whisper and at least three more cards. I do like Curse of Death's Hold in here. I do like Overwhelming Splendor, Cruel Reality, um, Leyline. I'm thinking we can. We could back off Leyline, I'm thinking. I think so. Yeah, let's back off Leyline. I, I like leaving in the Ghostly Prison. I like leaving in the full amount of... Um, let's go and sort by Converted Mana Cost on this one. Room for one more. Yeah, we'll go and add in a Rune Halo. At least with Rune Halo, it's kind of going to act as another Ghostly Prison where we can name a creature and get that down. Uh, we can't name Scion Tokens, but we can name stuff like Reality Smasher. But yeah, I kind of like this one, and I like the uh, the curse package we have going on. So we got our win, so hey, <laughs> thumbs up. That's a success to me so far. And let's see if we can't close it out. If we don't, hey, we have some fun going for that. All right, Sarge Open Hand, Godless Shrine, Godless Shrine, Marsh Flats, Curse of Thirst, Lost Oromancers. Uh, oh, yeah, that also works really well with uh, Greater Oromancy. Um, not with Greater Oromancy, but with the uh, Solemnity. Do we want to keep on this one? This is a little slow, and we have Overwhelming Splendor in the hand. Yeah, let's go and mulligan. You always kind of want to have at least one of your pieces. Ooh, okay. Now we have the famed uh, one lander that might be good if we just keep <laughs> ripping some lands. So we rip a land, Greater Oromancy, um, Rune's Halo, then Solemnity. Yeah, let's keep on. Man, this is, this is a pretty good little hand. We do have a Scry. Let's go and put that on the bottom. Hopefully we hit one of our land sources and we can get that down. And let's, we'll at least have two more draws to hit a second land source, and then we can kind of go from there. But it's going for an Ancient Stirrings. It's going to get that popped up. But yeah, you did see Lost Oromancers in here, so that works really well with Solemnity. So, players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifact creatures or on land. So, if we get down Lost Oromancers on the battlefield, it will not enter the battlefield with the Vanishing counters on there. And then if we have something like Nodes on the battlefield, um, we'll destroy the creature with the lowest power toughness. I can't remember exactly how that breakdown is, but it's something along those lines. Torment of Scarabs. All right, let's go and get the planes down. Anything else? We're going to go and pass the turn. Keep those fingers crossed to the magic gods that we hit our second land drop. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can use nodes to destroy the uh, the lost Oromancers, and then which will allow you to search up any sort of enchantment that you want. Oh, beautiful! Just like we drew it up. Let's get down the concealed courtyard. <laughs> um, I guess let's go and go for a greater Oromancy. 
We don't really, I don't want to go for Rune Taylor just yet, because whatever we name, it's not what they have in the hand. That's how it always works out. So we're going to get down Greater Orb, Mancy. Other enchantments you control off Shroud, and change of creatures you control off Shroud. So get that down. Anything else, going to go past the turn. Uh, once again, keep our fingers crossed that we get that third land drop so we can get slowly roll out uh, Phyrexian Unlife and Solemnity. The only thing we're really watching out from our opponent is any sort of counter magic. Um, that would kind of help slow it out. But at this point right now, this deck is pretty slow. We're just going to have to roll it out and assume that our opponent does have counter magic. So that's what we're going to go for. All right, Eldrazi Sp Spy... Uh, spy... <laughs> Sky Spawner. It is kind of funny if it was a... Sp you know, it could be a spy if it's floating in the air. But yeah, this this Eldrazi is really creepy to me. Like, when you think about what the Eldrazi does, where it just... Uh, you get the token on the battlefield, and it has that weird little birthing sack. Uh, ew, it really creeps me out. I don't like thinking about it. Oh, beautiful. Hit the planes. All right, let's go to get the... Uh, let's get the planes down. So, uh, if we go for Phyrexian Unlife, we can't get counters. I think I'd like that. But yeah, let's go for Phyrexian Unlife. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll go for Phyrexian on life. Worst comes to worst, we're going to allow this to get on the battlefield. That's going to buy us at least 10 more turns. Uh, not 10 more turns. Uh, 10 more life uh, once we get to the infect if we can't get Solemnity down or they have some sort of counter package going. So um, if they counter that. So at least we'll be able to get this down, kind of buy us a little bit more time. Then we can slowly roll out uh, Rune's Halo. And uh, you know, if we needed to give protection against the Eldrazi Sky Spawner, then we can go for that. Alright, Thought Not Seer. Oh, bummer, man. Okay, got it. So at least we're going to be able to get down Rune Halo on Thought Not Seer. Or we could go for Ghostly Prison. That's going to kind of tighten it down just a little bit. They'll still be able to swing in with the Eldrazi Sky Spawner. So more than likely, um, they'll probably take Solemnity. If they don't, then... Uh I don't know, that sounds pretty good. Uh, but we'll probably get down Rune Halo. Yes, they do take it. Alright, so we'll get down Rune Halo, naming Thought Not Seer. That'll stop the bleeding just a little bit so we can get that down and only be swinging in for like three, um, three points of damage. Alright, let's go and get the Rune Halo down. We could go for Torment of Scarabs. That'd be three live. Eh, that's not a race we want to go for. Let's go Rune Halo, naming Thought Not Seer. There we go. Thought not seer. Gain protection from that. Anything else, we're going to go and pass the turn. So, but yeah, you can see this deck. Um, I, I forgot about um, Thought not seer, to be honest, on Bantil Drazi. So, we'll probably throw the ley line of anticipation or the ley line back in to um, target opponent. Yeah, that way we can, don't have to have that come across. I haven't played against Eldrazi in so long. I kind of forgot that uh, it was a thing. I was thinking uh, Infect over there. So, we'll bring back in those, those ley lines. All right. Protection from Thought not seer. It's going to put us down to 14. Uh, he's still going into the red zone. Why not? He's a go-getter. And let's see what they're tapping out for now. Sack one of the Scions. Drowner of Hopes. Okay. Gets on the battlefield. Two Eldrazi colors. And that's going to be seven coming across. Concealed Courtyard. Let's go ahead and get that down. Let's go for the Ghostly Prison. We don't want to crack the Marsh Flats just yet, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed that we draw into uh, Solemnity, because uh, we can get that down. And at least it's going to stop them just a little bit. You know, maybe they can sacrifice the Eldrazi Scion tokens from swinging in off Ghostly Prison. But, um, but yeah, they're still going to have to be paying two mana to swing across. And that'll be seven. Com and then that'll put us down to 14, put us down to zero, and then another seven. So we've got about three turns on this one to start... Uh, kind of stabilizing, or maybe drawn to something that'll help us get out of it. We can always get down Torment of Scarabs, too, which will kind of slowly... Bitter Heart Witch. <sighs> Swinging for seven puts us down... Yeah, either way, um, if we go down to seven, it's not, really not the end of the world. So we'll just go and grab a uh, Planes on this one. And then this one does not have flying. So let's go and go Bitter Heart Witch. Now, they can swing in with the Eldrazi uh, Sky Spawner. This is going to put this on, have, they're going to put our opponent on having path to deal with the Bitter Heart Witch. They swing in with the Drowner of Hope. What we're going to be able to do is, um, well, excuse me, yeah, I was about to say they can sacrifice a, uh, we could block on the Drowner of Hope, but they're going to be able to sacrifice a Scion token to tap it down. So, um, <laughs> they did it before I could explain that line of play. Alright, so they've got the whole crew swinging in. Um... Yeah, I think they meant to click on Drowner on that one. That'll buy us another turn, though. They'll put this down to three. Uh, because once you get down to zero, then that's when you finally start getting the uh, the counters once you go past zero. So get the Urborg down. Let's go for the Torment of Scares. We're going to choose our opponent. Crazy things have happened. We might be able to close this one out. I right, get that down, and then go ahead and... I um, guess we don't want to swing in. Well, yeah, we'll just hold a Bitter Heart Witch. That way they have to like go for the... Uh, tap it down, and then we'll be online to kind of go for Drowner next turn. Alright, so we've got the Torment of Scarabs trigger on the stack. At the beginning of uh, Enchanted Player's Upkeep, that player loses 3 life, and they'll like, sacrifice a non-land permanent, or 
discards a card. So um, we'll see how they want to go as far as the Eldrazi Scion. They can tap down the Bitterheart Witch this turn. Um, but to kind of crack the seal on the Frexian Unlife, they need to get us down to past zero first. So we'll see what they're going to go for. If they just swing in like that, then we can chump block and go for um, Overwhelming Splendor, which is going to make all of their creatures 1-1s, one um, which will really kind of slow their clock down a little bit. We'll figure out exactly how we want to go for that. Okay, let's go and block on the Drowner of Hope. We'll have Death Touch. That'll be two coming across, puts us down to one. Let's search our library for a curse card. We should choose our opponent. I can't believe we, we got a bitter heart witch going off. Yes, we're going to use that ability. All right. So we go Overwhelming Splendor. It makes them a 1 1, which is going to slow the clock down, which gives them, they can start swinging with Thought Not Seer. If we go for Cruel Reality. Actually, if we, excuse me, if we just go for Curse of Death's Hold, minus one, that's going to wipe their whole board out, and then we have protection from Thought Not Seer. Let's go for Curse of Death's Hold. All right. It's going to wipe out Thought Not Seer. We go down to one that buys us a little bit more time to find uh, Solemnity, and then we have Thought Knots <laughs> just sitting over there chilling as a 3 3. Uh, let's go ahead and get the planes down, and then uh, we're going to go go ahead and pass the turn. <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing right now because um, whenever you play prison decks like this, and it's kind of goofy, and you kind of do get a win or whatever, I mean, I'm not saying we're going to get a win, but it kind of starts to shift your way <laughs> a little bit. I don't know, it's just kind of humorous to me so but we still are we you gotta watch out for reality smash we haven't seen him pop down but it's just kind of funny when stuff goes through. yeah there we go there's reality smash all right maybe it'll swing in for a four four and that'll crack the seal on frexian on life which will kind of buy us a little bit more time as far as it'll buy us about uh about three more turns with the reality smasher swinging in so all right swinging in for four it'll put us down to negative three cannot pay life anymore on our fetch lands or shocks Let's see if we draw into, draw into Lost or Manthers. All right, let's go ahead and get that down. And, and then we do not have Solemnity on the battle. No, we do not. So we'll still go ahead and get it down because at least it'll buy us another turn, just getting a body on the battlefield. And so that'll swing in for four. That'll be four poison counters next turn. Um, that'll be one more counter off. Then we swing it again. That'll be eight. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to get the counters off before we go for Reality Smasher. So some of our live draws right now at this point right now um, would definitely be another Rune Halo. Uh, we could name Reality Smash off the Rune Halo, which would give us protection from that creature over there. And then if not, we can. Um... All right, yeah, got to pay that tax, man. <laughs> so Rune Halo would be a good draw to kind of stop the Reality Smasher, or if we can simply draw into Solemnity, uh, will be to go from there. I think we had, uh, yeah, it got exiled, so almost one away. We'll go and let this swing in for four. We're okay, then we don't have to worry about any pump spells as far as infect. All right, four infect counters. And our opponent's sitting at one card in the hand, too. Let's see what we draw into. Draw into Windswept Teeth. We'll go and get that down. And then anything else. Now we're going to go and pass the turn. So I guess we'll still go ahead and... We're not going to chump block on this one. And the reason for that is... Um, we're going to buy one more time. Maybe we draw into another creature. Maybe we draw into Bitter Heart Witch. We draw into something else that will allow us to get the Lost Oromancers off. So if we can get that last counter off the Lost Oromancers, um, then we can... Um, grab the overwhelming splendor which will make it basically make it to where they can't have creatures on the battlefield and then they'll slowly lose to the torment of scarab so yeah go swing in for four that's fine and if we don't find an answer next turn we can chump block with the lost aura answers all right that'll be four in fact you know we could chump block now but if we're going to play to our outs i like going for this all right the vanishing trigger draw into another windswept heat so we're going to miss out on that last little trigger unfortunately um, not being able to get that last little counter off. But at least we're still going to be able to chump block by another turn. So, And that'll be the Torment of Scarab's trigger, which will get our opponent down to five. Oh, most. <laughs> should get him down to two, actually, next turn. Well, they could technically sacrifice the uh, the Thought Knots here. All right, so they can swing in with Reality Smash. Let's go and chump block with the Lost Orm answers. If we do draw into another Bitter Heart Witch, it would be definitely good for us. And we do want to block on this one just because we don't do not want to lose to infect. That'll be uh, eight infect counters over there. Okay, lost aura mancer hits the bin. Let's see, what we draw into. Do we draw into that rune halo? If not, sigil of the empty throne. All right, got it. What's in this one? Over? So close. We have the torment of scarabs coming across. Um, we're gonna kick it over our opponent. We're gonna let them finish out. Yeah, so we have Torment of Scarabs. It's gonna put them down to three, which is not gonna be enough, unfortunately. And they're gonna be able to swing with Reality Smasher off that trample. Get in that nice little combat damage. It is a bummer. We almost did. We'll see what it is, though. Reality Smasher swinging in. See if they uh, see if we can't draw anything else out from our opponent. Maybe some sort of I don't know what they're gonna go for. Go and let them swing in. 
and we'll see what was uh, what, what else was on top of our library. There we go. That's going to be infect damage coming across. Concealed Courtyard, Godless Shrine, and... Oh, there we go. A couple cards away. But hey, that's the way magic goes sometimes. Um, let's go ahead. Do we want to bring in the Ley Line of Sanctity? I do like the Ruined Halo we had in there for the protection. I like the Greater Oromancy. I like the Path to Exile to kind of take care of some of those creatures. You know, we have to watch out for a Thought Knot Seer. <sighs> But I kind of like what else we've got going on. I mean, I like the ghostly prisons. You know, we could back off the ghostly prisons and then in the tutors if we wanted to to go for the ley line of sanctity, just to get around the um, thought not seer. I get, let's go ahead and I can, yeah, let's go and back off the knights. Yeah, let's go and bring them in. Just because the way we're sequencing, it's a little hard for us to get. Let's cut one Torment of Scarabs. Um, let's cut, we have the Knight's Whisper in there. Solemnity, Ghostly Prison, Lost Ormancers. Overwhelming Splendor. I do like Sigil in here that allows us to kind of an alternative game plan. Let's just go ahead and back off. We'll back off a couple Knight's Whispers. Yeah, we'll leave those in. That way we can just hopefully just have a good opening hand. And we'll kind of send this one over to Game 3. All right, get the chat close out. But yeah, you can see with this deck, you know, it's a good Friday Night Magic deck. It's not, uh, you're not going to take it to your next Grand Prix and win the entire thing. Uh, Path, Leyline, Solemnity, and uh, yeah, this is good. Just to get lucky with Frexian Unlife. Yeah, we'll keep on this one. Do a Bitter Heart Witch if we can get into five mana. Put this onto the battlefield. Okay, Lillian of Sanctity. Let me make sure I'm saying that one correctly. Let's get down the Windswept Teeth, and then we're going to go ahead and pass the turn. Sometimes I get the ley lines picked up in my head, so I don't want to be talking about uh, ley line of anticipation the entire time when we're talking about uh, of sanctity. All right, opponents go for an ancient strings. We'll see if they're going to search off that one. All right, and then Eldrazi spy spawner. Uh, <laughs> sky spawner. I keep wanting to call it a spy, like an Eldrazi spy. I don't know, still creepy art though. All right, it's going to crack the windswept teeth. They're going to grab a godless shrine off this and put it into play tap. Not going to pay two life. And see what we draw into. Torment of Scarabs. Let's go and put the Godless Shrine into play. Not going to pay two, and then we're going to go and pass the turn. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of. We did see game one what the deck is capable of. So this is definitely what you, I would consider a Friday Night Magic style deck. Let's say you have a few of the curses. You have the black white mana base. You can even go. But this deck's really easy to go budget with. You don't have to have the shocks and fetches. It just doesn't really translate that well, that very good sometimes. So I have uh, shocks and fetches in here. But one thing that you can do is you can go. Um, ooh, Rune Halo. Um, let's go ahead and enter the battlefield. So we're going to go Rune Halo on Matter Reshaper. It's going to be a 3 drop. We'll have Path to Exile for any like big creatures that get out there. Uh, we have protection from uh, Thought Knots here. Yeah, let's go ahead and go Rune Halo on this one. That gives us a little bit more of a clock. We need we need as much time as we can. Matter Reshaper, protection. And then do we want to shock the Godless Shrine in? Let's go to put them on Aljuzzi Spy, Sky Spawner next turn. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and put this into play tap. Just kind of want to preserve our life total if we can. Uh, but yeah, you can go as budget as you want with this deck. You can definitely just go, uh, you know, black-white basics and then just throw some of these curses in there. Um, it's pretty fun. So you can really tailor it to whatever you kind of want to go for. So it's definitely a interesting deck to take to something like Friday Night Magic. That I, I would put it at this. You know, I'm not recording in the leagues or anything like that. Simply because, hey, <laughs> this deck's not, not the best out there. All right, let's go ahead and get down to Solemnity. I think that'll be good. Opponents tapped out. We can get that down. Then hopefully keep our fingers crossed for a nice little Frexian Unlife. Um, we're in a good spot right now. You know, they have Aldrazi um, Sky Spawner on the battlefield. We can go for Path to get rid of it. It'll give them another land. But uh, we'll see what they kind of deploy out this turn. If they're going for Reality Smasher, I'd like to save Path for that Reality Smasher, which they do have. Uh, we will have to chunk a card for Reality Smasher. So we can, since we already have Leyline on the battlefield, uh, we can simply just chunk the Leyline of Sanctity. Not being the really, you know, it's pretty much a dead card to us to begin with at this point in the game. Ghostly Prison. Okay. Let's go ahead and, I guess, it doesn't really matter. So if we go for Ghostly Prison, they're still going to pay two on the Reality Smasher to come across and the Spy, uh, the Sky, sp man, it's driving me nuts that I keep calling it Spy. Um, yeah, we'll wait to go, well, let's go on Path, I think on Reality Smasher right now. That way we don't just get caught by a random counterspell. I feel better doing that. Let's go ahead and discard the Ley Line of Sanctity. 
they will have the land to use next turn, but we're really banking on that Reality Smasher not being on the battlefield next turn, and so it really makes a difference having the, at least having that resolve, at least I'd rather go for that now, even though they do have access to that extra land. So, uh, next turn, if we don't hit the land drop, we're going to be going for Ghostly Prison. That's going to at least kind of slow down the Spy, um, the Eldrazi Sky Spawner from swinging across, and that Scion token. We'll see if they want to start tapping out for two for that. And we are sitting at 8 right now, so we do need to uh, we need to get something going. So that Ghostly Prison hopefully maybe will buy us a little bit more time, uh, depending on what they get out on the battlefield. Another Sky Spawner. If we draw another Rune Halo, that would be a good option for us to draw into. Horizon Canopy. Let's go and get that down. Let's go for the Ghostly Prison. They're sitting at 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, they do have 6 mana, so they're going to be able to start swinging across at least with 3 creatures. Get that down. Don't want to tap the Horizon Canopy at this point right now. Uh, then we'll go on and pass the turn. So, they're going to be able to swing in for it's going to be 2, 4, and then 5, which is going to put us down to 3. Um, we do have the Horizon Canopy activation next turn where we can pay 1 life and draw a card. So hopefully maybe we might be able to draw into a Runed Halo and name this the Sky Spawner. Or simply if we draw into Solemnity, then we'll be able to kind of stabilize from here. But, win or lose, we had fun. At least I had fun this game. Hope you had fun. <laughs> It's kind of fun to play prison janky decks like this sometimes. I don't know. It makes you feel magic alive. All right. Uh, I think what it is, it's almost like, because you're approaching magic in a way that, uh, I don't know, can you beat me? Like, I'm playing a subpar deck. I don't think I'm going to win, but can you beat me? <laughs> you have the better deck. See if you can beat us. All right. Draw the Curse of Thirst. Not exactly what we want, because that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 next turn. Let's go ahead and uh, sacrifice a Rising Canopy. See if we can't hit a Rune Halo. Concealed Courtyard. We're going to get that down. Um, we'll go and pass the turn to our opponent. Looks like they're going to be able to close this one out, though, with the, uh, the spies, the Eldrazi spies coming across with their birthing sacks over there. Really creepy. I don't like that card art. I think Eldrazi are my least favorite uh, creature types in Magic. I don't know. They're just creepy looking. Like, I don't like Reality Smasher. It's a weird looking card. Anyway. Alright, swinging it for four. It's going to put us down to zero. That will be just enough. The Eldrazi do break out of the uh, Overwhelming Splendor prison. But hey, we live the dream game one. That's what matters. Alright, swinging it for four. Puts us down to zero. And that will be good game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know what our win record's going to be with this deck, but if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.